What you're seeing above my head is a, a very important lamp, and this was a lamp that helped land a load of uh, munitions and weapons into Larn. Uh, right behind me now, I'm going to turn the camera, is the port of Larn. Now, I've come in there before on a ferry, as you can see, there's a ferry dock there now, but this plaque commemorates the landing of munitions and weapons in 1940. 14. This is when it was run, uh, the whole country of Ireland was run by the Brits, by the way. This is before they had the, the division and the counties were separated up. However, why did they know that they needed to land weapons then? Yeah, um, There was a thing called Home Rule, and what Home Rule actually meant was that uh, Ireland really wanted to rule uh, Northern Ireland and, and Ireland itself as a whole and wanted to separate us away from the mainland, from government, from Westminster. So generally that's what uh, the Home Rule was all about. So um, Carson, uh, the founding father of Northern Ireland, well what they did was they raised an army, they called it the Ulster Volunteer Force, and they landed these weapons which came in from uh, Germany. And you know it says here that these weapons actually landed on the 24th of April in 1914. Now if you take the foundation of Northern Ireland, and the reason why the foundation of Northern Ireland happened, was because that the um, Ireland per se, they became the free state, they separated away from the British Isles. You often hear people talk about partition, Simon. Mm. Well, that's what partition was, is where Ireland actually left the rest of the, the British Isles, let's just say, which then resulted in uh, the, the formation of the United Kingdom. Now, there was uh, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland uh, from 1921, and Ireland had actually partition separated. That's the now, terminology. how many counties are in the north? Well, there's now six, um, but there used to be actually nine as part of here. But the deal that was actually done uh, with Carson was that to take six counties, not nine. And there is rationale for that. What they say is that there was a lot of, let's just say, nationalists or Catholics uh, within the other three counties. And what they feared then was that they would not have uh, total domination in Northern Ireland. And that was the reason and the rationale for that. So, well, anyway. What, what what we've had is uh, the separation within Ireland and we've had people who have already seen from the very early days, 1914, yeah. that there was going to be uh, dirty business, um, things going on yeah. behind the scenes and people trying to seize all of Ireland yeah. back as a United Ireland. Now, there's some people down the south that would go, that would be a great thing. I'm well, sorry, I'm not on board. Um, I don't want to give this place up because it's part of the United Kingdom. And if we give up the United Kingdom, we've done other videos on this, it would be bad. Not just that. The part that's not, and this is not me being selfish. If this place fell into the hands of Southern Ireland, it would suffer immensely by uh, yeah. people who want to settle old schools. Uh, by the fact that you weren't on board with the the idea of, say, for instance, the socialism idea, the the wanting to join the European Union, um, everybody here would suffer, and I can't see that the people who were loyal to the crown being looked after, and I can't see that if we actually gave it up and there was things going on here that were illegal, I can't see Great Britain standing back in and saying no, that's wrong, that can't happen, so they can't leave. That's the long and the short of it. And that's the whole point I'm over here uh, because I need to uh, make it quite clear that if this country here falls, the rest of us fall. Now I've said this in a previous video, but there's also a moral obligation. Um, we, we looked after this country for so long, we can't just cast it away. I mean, it'd be like giving the Falklands to the Argies. It can't be done. Uh, it would be like, <laughs> giving away Gibraltar and look at the, all the places incidentally by the way and this won't go down well at all look at every place that we've walked away from and given back not many have done particularly well just saying historically speaking they've suffered after so well the truth of the matter is is that Ireland and I can't look after itself uh, you know they, they look good we talked about the Celtic tagger of many many years ago but that is a distant memory i mean ireland's in trouble 
uh, they can't sustain themselves. Uh, they're now a net contributor to the EU now that uh, the rest of the UK, being England, Scotland and Wales, has somewhat left and the contribution to the EU isn't as great from the um, from the United Kingdom. You see, Ireland now has more money to put in. But do you remember the blag? Do you remember yeah. how many times they blagged the South? They said, look, if give us a list of rules or give us a list of things that you want us to do <coughs> that would make you change your vote because yeah. they were offered the vote and the vote again yeah. and then they, they said well, we'll we'll comply to all this so the irish went yeah well that sounds like not a bad deal so they went okay tick the box and as soon as they did what did they do yeah well you see i mean that was uh, generally to do with uh, the maastricht treaty was one uh, there was another vote they came back then and they called it something else um, or it may have been the other way around but essentially how it went was that they sent the people to the polls in Ireland Ireland voted against the EU and they sent them back to the polls again, again. A, a year later to get the answer that they actually wanted After to. lying to them that you'll get what you want, yeah. all the concessions Now whenever there was talk about Brexit um, even pre the 23rd of June 2016, I mean I wrote a piece uh, some three months before the Brexit referendum and I entitled that piece Hotel California Brussels you can check out any time you like but you can never leave. Now, it wasn't that I had a crystal ball or I was prescient. It was just that I followed what the EU uh, they had formed for. In other words, that they, it's not democracy. Uh, it's they, the they mafia. Dictate. Yeah, you absolutely. never leave. Yeah. And look at us. I mean, as you see earlier on, they're, they're, they're now paying into projects over here they have no business being part of, right? Absolutely. Moreover, right, absolutely. they're still having stuff to do with us on the mainland that really yeah. there is no business. Well, again, I, as I say, I call it Hotel California Brussels. Uh, uh, Brexit is Hotel California Brussels. You can check out any time you like. You can never leave. And the reality is, is that let's look at Brexit and the round. Is that, I mean, why do we vote? Uh, and I can tell you why I voted, and then you can add your contribution. But, I mean, I voted to get away with what I like to call a dictatorial Ponzi scheme. And it's a place where you put your money in. It's a place where what they do is they send some of your money back, not at all, they cream off the top. And then they say to people in your area that they funded that, they funded this, this is EU funded. And right. I just, yeah, absolutely. Now, one point I have, Simon, before that we move on, is that at the time of the Brexit referendum, well, wasn't there talk that, uh, you know, we had been putting money into the European Union for all of that time, and yet we owed them money at the end? I've got some interesting facts for yeah. you, right? Yeah. By the way, so if you know anything about the European Union, right, over in Wales they say, oh, they gave us this sports centre. I was like, right, yeah. so did you know, for every pound that they gave you for this sports centre, you put £2.50 into the European Union? And incidentally, the European Union is an organisation, not a country, right? So why is it that, say, for instance, Great Britain has, at the time, uh, and this was going back about five years ago, had 1,200 tonnes of gold? Mm -hmm. uh, France had somewhat less, and I think Germany had something like, uh, maybe say for instance, two 2,000 tonnes of gold. Why is it that uh, the European Union had 11,000 tonnes of gold? It was around figures like that, and I was like, but how is it something that's not even a country has amounted that mass of gold that's not being used, they're just mm -hmm. sitting on it? This is when you realise that it's nothing more than a, a scheme to seize uh, sovereignty, which is exactly what it wants to do here, as well as over on the mainland. But it wants to do that with everywhere. And before we ruined the, the, the whole organisation by leaving, and they didn't think we would, and the people that over, like Nigel Farage, they were meant to offer us, uh, they, they were there to say that if you follow me, uh, it'll all go well and we'll leave and it'll all be great. But the fear tactics they put on us, they assumed would win. And then what would happen is we'd say, no, actually, most of us don't want to leave. And they go, there's your democracy. You've had your democracy. Oh, incidentally, now we're nicking your sovereignty because we're now turning into a super state. Well, anyway, this didn't happen. We were a little bit pissed at us about this. And this is why England's being punished at the moment. Yeah. yeah. If you want to get stuff in, not so good. If you want to get out, especially at holiday, not so good. But they've also stuck a hard border in the Irish Sea. We're going to get yeah. onto that tomorrow, I believe. Oh, absolutely. And let's just talk a wee bit about it. That's the reason why that I brought you here was uh, this is a historic uh, place, really, in, in Northern Ireland. And it's a, uh, certainly a historic place in terms of uh, what was happening just a hundred years ago, before seven years before the formation of Northern Ireland, before that the Southern Ireland actually partitioned. 
So uh, this is of huge significance in that, that, you know, there's a border. Whenever Ireland partitioned, I'm talking about Southern Ireland from Northern Ireland, the rest of the United Kingdom, uh, we ended up with a border between Northern Ireland and the Free State. Now, effectively, what has happened as a result of the Brexit referendum is that, you know, there's four constituent parts in the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Now, imagine the circumstances in where that there's a, a vote, a democratic referendum, and that the people in Northern Ireland are included in that vote. Everybody ticks the box, 17.4 plus million people voted to leave the EU, mm -hmm. and yet their democracy was denied to Northern Ireland in that, that three constituent parts, England, Scotland and Wales, was treated completely differently from Northern Ireland. Now, effectively, what has happened in Northern Ireland is that we now have a border between us, I'm pointing out that way, which is Scotland, uh, on down the channel here a wee bit would be Isle of Man. It's England. a crooked border, but it goes yeah. across, doesn't so it? So we have a border in, in what we call this is the North Channel. Further on down would be the Irish Sea. And at this point, in at this port, if you want to turn around there, Simon, at this port in Man, uh, we now have checks on goods coming from England, Scotland and Wales. We have three ports in Northern Ireland. We have uh, Larne, we have Belfast, we have another port in Warren Point. And, and effectively speaking, the EU has dictated the circumstances whereby that they, they say that they want checks on goods coming to this part of the United Kingdom, Northern Ireland. Do you know what that's like? That's yeah. like somebody putting a checkpoint between your hallway and your dining room. Absolutely. You own both Absolutely. sides, yeah. but they're now checking yeah. everything in between. And the more bizarre thing is this, is that the British government have agreed to it now, and I think it was a case where I, yes, well, I'm talking to people, uh, like people believe that Boris uh, thought that, well, well, we'll do it now and then we'll try to reverse it later. But do you think Boris e actually had anything to do with this? Uh, well, the, the suits beyond and uh, the, the conglomerate which surrounds, let's just say. Well, I mean, let's let's take the, the Prime Ministers from, from David Cameron, who got got up and running with the Brexit referendum. Never thought we'd go for it. No, you see, this is they didn't believe that they were going to get Brexit and then they woke up one morning and they, and they had it. The people what voted. Was it they went, the plebs have actually voted. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's look at David Cameron. He was a Remainer. Let's look at Theresa May, Remainer. even more of a Remainer than David Cameron. Yeah. Now let's look at Boris Johnson. Well, he had his foot in both camps where he wrote that he was a Remainer. He also wrote a letter to say that, well, he wanted to leave. But people say that Boris Johnson was a Europhile, uh, and, and we can't avoid that. Now, this new one that is coming in, and we believe it's going to be Liz Truss. Are she you ready for it? Oh, she came from the Liberal Democrats, right? She was in the CMD movement when she was young. Her mother was a lefty, and I'm, we're talking about hard So left she's here. a lunatic. And now you're ready for it. Now she's now put in charge of uh, decoupling the the uh, what we call the protocol uh, and, and great creating a new deal for Northern Ireland. Let me just tell you a wee bit about that. And we'll get into more about this tomorrow. There is a thing in three Parliament. You might hear about it on your news at the minute. They call it the Protocol Bill. It is written in a thing called constructive ambiguity. Uh, we talked about this earlier. Where people word, word salad. Yeah. So people, what they do is they have a tendency to scan the, the document and to read the first few paragraphs like or whatever. And I there's 26 uh, uh, paragraphs or articles in the, in this document. And if you read from one to 20, you think this is great because Northern Ireland needs this and this is going to reverse a lot of this How stuff. How many pages are there? Seven eight pages, but it's not a big How document. Many? It's not a big. There is a bigger version. Well, what I'm saying is, so somebody who's like me is dyslexic. Yeah. Yeah. You're never going to make it. Well, you couldn't read the full document, but there was a breakdown, uh, understandable version for the people. And, and reading that document, the 26 paragraphs of it, what you find is that the first 20, when you look at it, you say, well, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. And then you get to the 26, Article 26 within which the is document. The key which is the key point. And then what it does, I call it the snakes and letters document. <laughs> that you think <laughs> that you've, you've rose, right? And then the next minute, you know, you're back down, back down the, the snake again. But a sec uh, effectively, what it says is, all of this stuff before means nothing. Yeah. They call it an enabling bill. And what an enabling bill means is that, uh, well, anything from 1 to 20, which is the good stuff for the people of Northern Ireland, if we enact those, it has to go back through the Parliament again. Now, if any of those 1 to 20 uh, interferes with, with legislation that is already there, then legislation has to be passed. So we're really back to square one in where that you have all that fighting and, you know, uh, More trouble to and, and fro. You, and also, when it goes back, you generally lose ground, not gain ground. Well, well, well yes, well, people say that it could be lessened, but it's even more sinister than that. Uh, and this is why I call it a snakes and ladder document. 
is that, you know, we, they say that we're getting something. Our politicians are saying, oh, this is great, because what it does is it gives them a bit of breathing space. But I, not only do I believe, but I fully understand, having read that document, having went through it with some legal representation, is that what they're doing is that they're kicking the can down the road. You know, by the time that, that if this is passed, uh, people in Northern Ireland think that they've got something, then they enact anything from 1 to 20, which is the good stuff from us. They have to take it back through the parliament again, so it's back to square one and again. And at which time uh, you've got a younger generation which are easily more well, malleable. Well, even more than that, because it runs down the clock to a point in 2024 where they have written into the uh, protocol that there's going to be uh, a vote in the Northern Ireland Assembly. Now, here's what they did. The whole Northern Ireland Assembly was set up that in that that it had to be cross-community voting. In other words, if you can't please both sides, you can't do it. It's as simple as that. You have to arrive at a, a, an equitable solution for both sides. But what they have done is they have removed the cross-community portion of what, what is written in the Belfast Agreement to allow for that vote to take place in where that it's a majority rule vote. Now, here's the, here's the reality. Right. is that there's a conglomerate of left-wing, liberals, Europhiles, uh, and even people from within our own community that want to really be part of Europe. And what they will do in 2024, they will vote in that assembly to keep that bill. We can't not defeat that as unionists because we don't have enough people that want to out of the European Union. Right. So we can't vote, vote it out. But when that happens, effectively, you're not part of the UK anymore. And it's even more sinister than that, is that then what happens is that once, we, once they do that with us, Nicola Sturgeon demands the same. Nicola Sturgeon is, is waiting, uh, ready and but able. she hates us anyway. They do, but what they're doing is they're waiting for the settlement to actually occur here in Northern right. Ireland. So, so let you take up the slack. They want the same. Right. Yeah, they want brilliant. The same. So this is, now you see this is, again, constructive ambiguity written in words which look fine, which mean different things, which mean everything to everybody. But when examined, this protocol bill, well, we often say that if we don't fit defeat this, uh, well, it's going to defeat us. Now here's the real problem, Simon. Remember what, what Northern Ireland was all about. Remember what the conflict in Northern Ireland was all about. Remember why these people landed these guns a hundred years ago. Because it's they weren't listened to. They wanted to remain part of Britain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be British. They've got a British birthright. Now I bang my head. I you know, and I try to but think from the you know the last thing you want is trouble again, right? Well this but is what I'm there saying. There are people out there, I'm sure, somebody out there that will go Sod this, I'm going back to the old ways. Well, here's how that it looks uh, to the onlooker. And I'm talking about even ordinary people are saying this right now. Well, hang on a wee minute. Um, to give the Republicans a leg up, what they did is they moved heaven and earth and give you to a allow down. for all these mechanisms, to allow them to be part of the system, uh, to let their prisoners out of jail, you know, whilst they had a private army, still allowing them to be part of a government, even though that they were Which still... also made all the victims of their crimes. Now they're second class citizens. They don't matter in the equation anymore. But that all happened uh, back then. To give Admittedly, I've got, I've, got, I've got to give it a little bit of impartiality. They let loyalists out and provost. Well, 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 right. Look, look it, here's my stance, and I'm saying this to the people, is that I would rather that there was a settlement in where that everybody was catered for. You know, and we should be dealing with the, the needs of people, not the wants of extremists. That's just how I see things. Yep. Now, if there's going to be a settlement, it has to cater for both sides of this community. Because it remember, this, this conflict in Northern Ireland was all about land and it was all about identity. And, you know, if, if, it, if it happens that uh, the people from Northern Ireland are taken away from the rest of the United Kingdom, mark my word, there will be people that will will be bad want times. to go back living thumbs again. Yeah. And that is why we're pointing this out. Anyway, yeah. there's a lot more to follow. Keep Absolutely. tuned. Absolutely. And on a, a happier note, I think it's about time that oh, look at the watch here. Am I allowed? <laughs> Absolutely. You and I had a time because right. it's been a and, and Thursday it's, And it's Reclaim UK. Oh, sorry, Restore UK. Restore, sorry. Um, yeah. Because uh, you, you talk to Reclaim, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> That's why I was getting confused. Well, we're Reclaim, we're doing stuff with people in England. But, right. you know, follow us on, on YouTube, follow us on um, Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Restore UK. And I have to say, look, we do talk a lot about the Northern Ireland uh, conflict, but we also talk about world affairs, global mm -hmm. affairs. Uh, we talk about, um, really, what, what are we pointing at? We're pointing at corruption, we're pointing at we, bad We, we law. should we're at some at... point get into by the way, um, America's input on the Troubles. Well, that will we, be another story. Yeah, one of the we do documentary style videos, and we've been doing that for a very, very long time. And one of the documentaries that we've done uh, not too long ago, and we'll not spoil it for people because you and I can talk about it and do some things on it, but it was CIA interference in Northern Ireland from 
we can trace it back as far as 1984 and we can prove conclusively that the Americans were stirring the pot here for many, many years. <laughs> I've learned so much. Yeah. It's amazing. Anyway, we're off. There'll be more tomorrow.